And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. It's time, Bunny! Yes, it is. Oh, great uh, thumbnail. That's not 84, but fucking great. <laughs> ah, man. Yeah, I knew I wasn't going to find it. I, I, I knew I wanted... The dead Barney balloon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's time, Bunny! It's time. Yes, it is. Yes, Bunny, my friend. It is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film Podcast to sashay our way into the back half of the show, wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our all-new extra strength and available only for a limited time, so order yours today. Movie of the week! And this week, we get in our DeLorean, TARDIS, hot tub, or whatever your preferred method of time travel is. So uh, maybe you have a lake house with a magic uh, uh, mailbox. Yeah. Maybe you're just a speedster and can uh, run so fast. Yeah. Whatever your preferred time travel method is, because this week uh, uh, is a strange one. We will be discussing something near and dear to my heart, the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, specifically the 1984 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Okay. Uh, so excited to be talking about the 1984 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Uh, I think this should be a new Thanksgiving tradition for this podcast is that every year we watch a different Macy's parade. I think that this is a great idea. I started... Well, I mean, there aren't all that many Thanksgiving movies out there. There aren't that many Thanksgiving movies out there, and I've never particularly cared for trains, planes, and automobiles. Which I, is, I like it. I, I, I like mean, it. I like it, but it's not something that I watch every year or hardly at all. You know, I think it's fine, but it's no Christmas story. It's no Scrooge. I'm not going to... It's no uh, Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny. It's not yeah. like I'm going to watch the uh, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles every year. I just don't care about it that much, but... <coughs> I think this would be a fun one. I started watching the 1995 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Uh, this week, and it said, uh, and I thought, I was a senior in high school in 1995. This will be fun to watch this parade because I'll know so many things. Yeah. And, and so uh, uh, they say uh, in the opening, Don Pardo is still alive for all of this. That was a big trip because yeah. Don Pardo has been dead for a while and he doesn't do the Saturday Night Live openings anymore. Uh, uh, Daryl Hammond does them. Is he dead now? I don't know. Uh, no. But I think that had you asked me last week on the blind, said, okay, this is the 1984 parade, who do you think is hosting? I think I have a good shot of having said Pat Sajak. Yeah. yeah. He pops up in a few of these. Oh, so I was watching the 95 one, and it said, uh, uh, and featuring the premiere of Three new balloons. And I'm like, oh, new characters appearing in 1995. I'm really excited. Oh, okay, who do you got? And it's like, Derek the Dragon and Sky Dancers. And I'm like, what the fuck is any of this? Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm so confused. But I knew a <clears throat> lot from the 1984 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. I yeah. miss Underdog. <laughs> Every year that balloon showed up. Kids don't know who the fuck Underdog is anymore. Has Underdog been retired? I don't. I think so. I, yeah. I think that there are certain Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade balloons that like. Uh. It, oh, and then there was another bear, and it was called like. 
Nilbert the Bear. I don't remember. From the 1995 <coughs> one, there was some bear balloon. And I looked it up, and I'm like, what character is this? And, it, and I looked it up, and it said, oh, this character is the mascot of, the, of this uh, store, chain of stores. <clears throat> and I'm like, oh, okay. But then I looked into it. Uh, this corporation, which went out of business the year after they appeared at the Macy's Parade, the corporation was, was like, we want to have our bear mascot as a balloon on the Thanksgiving Day Parade. So what they did is they recycled the Snuggle Bear. <laughs> Apparently, uh, Snuggle Soft, wasn't okay. using the bear wasn't using the bear balloon anymore so this corporation bought the snuggy bear and just reformatted it to look like their bear mascot they recycle balloons <laughs> that blew my freaking mind and i'm like hey, what would you do now like oh they have a new clifford the big red dog balloon uh, for the new live-action Clifford balloon. Oh, how interesting. He has a cape and the letter U on his chest. And he's flying in the air. How interesting. Recycling. Uh, so I fucking love the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. It's one of the very few things that I can point to and say, hey, here is a family tradition that I did with my parents and now I do it with my kids. My parents weren't big fans of, uh, how do I put this? Me? Yeah. They weren't big fans of me. I was ignored a lot. Charlie Brown music depresses me so much. Yeah. Oh my fucking god. Charlie Brown music to me is Elliot Smith for everyone else. <laughs> it depresses me so much and every year, you know, you're inundated with like you know, they play uh, the Great Pumpkin and, and, and not so much the Thanksgiving, but I find the Thanksgiving theme for a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving is just the best. Yeah. And then you hear the Charlie Brown Christmas music over and over again everywhere, and it just sends me into a massive depressive episode. And every year I try and pinpoint it. And I guess what, what, I, what makes me depressed is that Every year, Christmas specials were the most important thing to me as a child, and I would get my parents to sit down on the couch and watch them with me, but eventually I reached an age where they just didn't give a shit to watch things with me anymore. Yeah. And so the, the majority of growing up, I was just watching all of these things alone, and now like, oh, Charlie Brown Christmas music. Okay, that's great. Nobody loves me. I hate myself. So not a lot of family traditions. So here are the ones that are still around. Getting drunk on the weekends. During our weekend drinking se sessions, finding one child of mine and having painfully uncomfortable drunk conversations with them. Okay. I'm really good at that, and uh, I apologize to Mal. Uh, thankfully, they didn't hear any of that. They have headphones on, so. Phew. <laughs> uh, Watching SNL, SNL, and the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, but even the Macy's one, like, I've, I've worked really hard to make watching the Macy's Day Parade with my kids my own tradition and not necessarily a family tradition because uh, even the Macy's has a hint of Charlie Brown to it because my dad would wake me up for it. Yeah. My dad would wake me up every year for the Macy's Parade. The Macy's Parade's about to start, Stevie. You need to wake up. You need to wake up, Stevie. Come on, the Macy's Parade is about to start, Stevie. And he'd wake me up, and back then it was live. Yes, yeah, so that, that, that would have to be like 7 in the morning or some shit. Yeah, my dad would be waking me up at like 5.55 a.m. to start watching the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. And sure, when I'm like 6, 8 years old, like I'm super s s stoked to watch the Macy's Parade with my dad. Uh, but, it, like, one year, I was, like, 11 or 12, my dad went to wake me up, and I was super tired, so I just slept in, and my dad was so offended by that that he refused to ever watch the Macy's Parade with me ever again for the rest of my life. Okay. 
But then I kept watching it. It's like I was fucking twelve. I was fucking tired. Fuck you. Yeah. So so yeah. So I so I've made it my own thing now with me and my kids, and it's just I love it every year because it's so bizarre. It's so odd. Nowadays, it is a it is a tradition that the first hour is done. Um, the first hour is comprised of musical numbers from current Broadway musicals. Yeah. And then the second and third hours are dedicated to the actual parade because the parade starts really far away, and it takes a while for them to reach Macy's, which is the end of the parade, which is where they do the actual filming. So the first hour, the parade starts, and as they slowly make their way to where they actually film, uh, Broadway plays happen. And that's always, like, I'm always gambling for horrible weather because, like, even with the 1984 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade that we watched, it's, like, 36 degrees. Yeah. You know, it's 36 degrees. It's cold as shit. Uh, I, this year I want to do a drinking game, uh, take a drink, and anytime someone says it's cold. Jeannie's heart was breaking for the, for the drum majorettes. Oh, yeah, there were some high school uh, uh, marching bands that had women there in the skimpiest fucking outfits, yeah. and I'm like, oh, my God, it's fucking 36 degrees. This is child abuse. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Like, oh, that it's drove me nuts. Like, damn, you're killing these women. Yeah. It's like, yeah, they're smiling for the camera. They're in fucking shock. Like, and shit, dude. Is there a song in the world anywhere where you feel the marching band version is better? Uh, yes. I have the perfect answer for this. Yeah. Uh, Gary Glitter. Gary Glitter. Yeah. Do 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 do. Because Gary Glitter is a goddamn child rapist. Yes. So if you had a chance between listening to a version recorded by a child rapist and a version by a fucking Ohio State marching band, the marching band wins in this one instance. <laughs> I am so proud that I picked the perfect answer out of my fucking ass, but I did. That was good. Thank so you. I am an exception. Really, I'm really proud of that. <laughs> I, for, I, I was shocked. I haven't watched the Olympics in fucking forever, but when I heard a marching band play the... Uh, like, oh, the Olymp this band is going to play the Olympic theme song. Fucking okay, whatever. But once I heard it, oh my god, it like hit somewhere in my soul. <laughs> the one thing that I find fun about the Macy's Day Parade, and I'm hoping it hasn't changed too much, but Macy's Day. but watching but watching this from 1984, I like the idea that you can look at the screen at any given ta time and say, "Who's that clown?" And chances are good there was either a clown just coming on the screen or just leaving the screen. The thing that I find fascinating is all the parade, unless they specifically say, a lot of times you're watching the parade and like, oh, here come the clowns, and they're doing frat balls and, and they're doing flips. Oh, what fun. Yeah. Those are fucking Macy's employees. <laughs> I find that fascinating. Like, we were... Like, uh, Natasha came in and watched a little bit with me, and she's watching the clowns, and, and I go, those motherfuckers are probably paid minimum wage. Yeah. To be a clown on fucking TV. <laughs> this is weird-ass shit. Oh. And the, the, the one thing that I really love about watching the Macy's, a Macy's, an old Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade as a movie for the podcast is, in a way, these parades are pretty much meant to be disposable. 
Yeah. These are single serving parades, a parade that also acts as a three hour commercial that is not really meant to be to ever be seen yes. again. They do the parade live, then they do the Westminster dog show live, and then they yes. replay the parade because no one watches TV on Thanksgiving, and then that's it. The the parade goes bye bye and it's it, it's not like you're meant to see this Thanksgiving Day parade again on like a like a rerun. So it's no. pretty amazing. I, I got so excited when I learned that YouTube has kept so many parades. I found 2019, 18, 16, 2012, 2011, 2006, 2005, 2004, 2001, 99, 98, 95, 1989, 1980, 1976. So many fucking parades. Yeah. A lot of them on YouTube have the first hour cut out, uh, the, the more newer ones. Like, if you're going to watch the 2011 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, the first hour is going to be gone because that's all Broadway show tunes and they're all fucking copyrighted. So a lot of the videos of the Macy's Parade on YouTube are like an hour and 58 minutes, you know? So I like this one because it doesn't have the opening credits, but it's pretty much got everything else. Yeah, but yeah. but 1984 is the year where they have yet to start the Broadway musical trend. So the first hour is just a bizarre shit show. <laughs> it's just so fucking weird. Uh, there are so many of them on YouTube though that they really work as odd time capsules, especially this one that we watched from 1984. And so, to be clear, my plan this week. Well, because you can see who was popular enough at the time. Yeah. To be a part of the Macy's Day Parade. And frankly, this was kind of surprising. Because, like, that was the guys from Riptide. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mark Singer standing yeah. up on the float, waving, and everyone's like, oh, yeah, Mark Singer. Yeah, Mark Singer. And the whole float was an advertisement for V. My kids don't know who the fuck the Beastmaster is. Like, fucking, but that's exactly that time that, like, yeah, 1984, fucking, yeah. Mark Singer. Soleil Moonfry. This is perfect. And Menudo. Or as I like to call them, the Wet Backstreet Boys. Oh. I can say that because I'm Latino. Slash Latina. I came up with that right before we did the podcast, and I was so proud of it. Yeah. It, 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 okay, so uh, before I, I get into my list, uh, I just want to plug my YouTube channel, <coughs> Storytime with Mr. Steve, because I did a nearly half-hour story time about the history of the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, and I will yes. be advertising it so much over this next week that I'm going to bug the shit out of everyone to watch this. But I'm really proud of it, and it oh, really it does a good fun. job. Really does a good job of explaining the history of the Macy's Parade. Now, it's one of my best works. So everyone should check that out on YouTube. So, so this week we're watching the 1984 Macy's Parade free on YouTube. Uh, this one is two hours and 53 minutes. It does. It's missing the first seven minutes, and that's it. And so... But it's really good. And so I, I wrote a bunch of stuff. This one has a bunch of commercials that I love. And I just I wrote a bunch of stuff, and I thought, let's go through this, some of the stuff that we like or that we thought was interesting. Just rapid fire. Okay? Okay. Okay. And some things I actually looked up and found some information about. In fact, let's start with that one first. Where is it? Okay. A vaudevillian clown appears six times on this three-hour parade. A Was bizarre a vaudevillian clown. The guy who ate the tissues. Yes. Yeah. That man. I saw name... him palming them, so you yeah. know, not so good a job. Yeah, that man's name is Avner the eccentric. Noticed, I said is. Motherfucker still alive. He is 73. Yeah. Uh, he's considered 
the thinking man's clown. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and and I'm like, like. See, I, I, whenever I've heard that that term applied, it, it always seems like they're not good at anything that you're calling them. So, yeah. like, the thinking man's clown isn't really a very good clown. Yeah. It should be or, an every man's clown. Or calling Dudley Moore the thinking woman's sex symbol yeah. kind of <laughs> implies you're really not sexy at all. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm this, I'm actually the, uh, the international sex symbol for blonde Korean women named Gladys. Yeah. So I got that going for me. I thought that was it's, only honorary. A, well, it, uh, yeah, I got an honorary degree from blonde Korean women named Gladys. But uh, so I looked up Avner the eccentric because he appears a ridiculous times. This is a very Avner the eccentric heavy episode of fucking. Uh, yes the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. So I need to look this guy up. You wouldn't believe it. He was in the film Jewel of the Nile. Okay. He was the title role. He was the Jewel of the Nile. Oh, okay. I thought he was the Nile. <laughs> no, like, wow. because, because uh, you know, it's supposed to be like a romantic... Indiana Jones, like an Indiana yeah. Jones for chicks, romancing the stone, jewel of the Nile. And so they're all out on this treasure hunt to find the jewel of the Nile. We must find, oh, it's going to make us rich. But then they realize that the jewel of the Nile is just a guy. He was that guy. Okay. Oh, hey, strobe effect warning, yes. apparently. Wow. Okay. So there you go. Yeah, he was in the jewel of the Nile. Also, I figured that you would appreciate the fact that, you know, when you watch a Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade on YouTube, you don't know what NBC affiliate you're getting. Yeah. The 1995 one is from New Orleans, from an NBC station in New Orleans. I thought you'd appreciate it. This is Channel 4, New York. Yeah. We will now be pausing the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade so that channels can give their channel name. Hey, this is Channel 4. Forget about it. <laughs> uh, I gotta say, as a pansexual, gender-fluid female, Brian Gumble, young Brian Gumble, does it for me. Yeah? I forgot. He was a handsome dude. <laughs> Back in the day. I, I, I was surprised. I, I also hope to never hear Maureen McGovern sing a disco version of a Beatles song ever let's, again. Let's not, let's not gloss over the fact that we know, as an audience, we know that Brian Gumbel had to suddenly go run and take a pee. Absolutely! Absolutely. Yes. Oh, I like that. You don't that. just hand over the reins to Mary Lou Retton. <laughs> yeah, that was surprising. Only under emergency situations. He gave oh, he gave the reins of the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade to three different people. Yeah. That's how much he uh, the Brady Bunch mom, <laughs> Mary Lou Retton, and some actress lady I've never heard of, so he can run inside Macy's and take a piss. Yeah. That was hilarious. Mm -hmm. Funny, how excited were you when you saw Placido Domingo get the front page award? Uh, I cried. I cried. I'm, I'm man enough to admit it. I, you know. I don't I don't know this for a fact, but I wouldn't be surprised if they said Placido Domingo, we would love to have you on the Macy's parade. <coughs> no. I no go to your Macy's parade. Unless you give me a ward. 
And then uh, NBC is like, shit, we need to come up with some fake-ass award to give the Placido fucking Domingo. Uh, how about the front page award? We can make that a thing. There you go. This is the Montgomery, the Montgomery Burns Award for uh, Outstanding Achievement in the Field of Excellence. Hi, Max. Hi, Max. Uh, Maxwell and Eleanor had a sleepover. They just came back. <laughs> so there you go. Okay, kids, go. I have a lot to talk about. Bunny, uh, if you don't get me the G.I. Joe secret mission train set for Christmas, yeah. I am going to hold my breath until I pass out. Yeah. Just want to be clear about that. I The one thing I want for Christmas, I mean other than a sex doll, is the G.I. Joe secret mission train set. These just and then the, the G.I. Joes from back in my day. That's when they were I'm like 12 say. inches? None of them had Kung Fu grip. The big 12 inches back when they were yeah. like this freaking big? Yeah. With the realistic air. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Yeah. It must have been so hard for... I was shocked to hear the alternate... Female lyrics to God Bless the USA. Yeah. That surprised me. And if we had made it into the disco era with the original 12 inch G.I. Joe, that Christmas, realistic chest hair. Hell yeah. It was coming. Hell it yeah. was coming in the evolution. There's a surprising amount of silence in this Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade broadcast. I blame Pat Sajak. He was shit. Brian Gumbel had his shit together. Pat yeah. Sajak needs to go back to the wheel because he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing in this. Like, how hard is it really to be Pat Sajak? I mean, you're literally just paid... To smile and be nice. Yeah. That's like your whole fucking job. Like on the Wheel of Fortune, you don't even have to hold question cards. You just have to pretend like you give a shit about what's going on. I went to the dentist this week and they had uh, The Price is Right on the TV. And yeah. I don't think I have watched that in like 10 plus years. But uh, first off, it was shocking to see age hit Drew Carey. Yeah. Number one. Uh, number two, I don't remember there being that many advertisements on the show before. But it's like, oh, you could win this new car. Surprise. We're going to do an advertisement for the car now. Or you could win this dishwasher made by this company. This is a commercial for this company now. Here's a small game. Great. Okay, that game happened. Let's go to commercials. Okay, the commercials are done. Now let's do some more commercials before the next round of commercials. And it's just like, has the show always been like this? And have I just not noticed it? I don't know. Because I don't watch uh, The Price is Right a lot. But now... now to my knowledge, we have not heard anything, like, really significantly bad about Drew Carey. I think there was a little something that he kind of blew by. And I don't trust that. Uh, if there's it's... any celebrity that I would have to pick for who I suspect has bodies in the basement, it's Drew Carey. He's just weird looking. Oh, you didn't hear about Drew Carey? No. He had Bob Barker spayed and neutered. <laughs> which I thought was like, uh, uh, you kind of deserved it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, so fuck you, Pat Sajak. And, and let me just come out and say, uh, my pussy got wet for Menudo. Yeah. Yeah, being honest. I hated Menudo in the 80s. Because they were popular when I was like seven or eight, and I was very gender normative at that time, heteronormative. And it's like, I'm a boy. I can't like Menudo because Menudo's a fan for girls. So I don't like Menudo. But then I would be like, 
but damn if I don't respect them. Because they're an old Mexican boy band that's that for like two years was super popular in a Amer- in a racist America. I don't yeah. know how the fuck you did that, but kudos to you. Yeah. I hated Menudo, but I liked seeing Mexicans on TV. Yeah, I didn't hear or somehow catch that they said it was Menudo, but I just looked at them and I, I knew it was Menudo. I, 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 I grew up here. This is like my time period. Yeah. This yeah. was my adult, my early adulthood. So, like, I, I just looked up and I was like, Menudo. It's got to be Menudo. Menudo is basically uh, the Mexican Jackson 5, which would make it uh, Jackson 5. Because the J is pronounced with a Y and then 5. So, yeah, so cinco. So, uh, yeah. Well, and you and you can't like really rec- look at Menudo and recognize Menudo by the people who were in Menudo. Oh yeah, not at all. I wonder how the little kid looks now. Because if you remember, they had to be all a specific age, and they were rotated out of the group as soon as they got older. Yeah. Uh... Let me tell you something. Uh, there's a lot of people that were in this Macy's parade that are still alive. Uh, out of all the people that that describes, Soleil Moonfry looks fucking amazing right now. I did not give her too big of a look. Man. Uh, well, well, she she just starred in a reboot of Punky Brewster, which I yeah. think has already been canceled. But, oh, my God, she still looks amazing. She looks great. Yeah? Yeah, meanwhile, Joey Lawrence is uh, uh, not so great. Uh, I've about had my full... Between this and Money Plane, I've had my uh, fill of Joey Lawrence. Yeah. Hey, can you I've, believe it? I've, I've, Joey I've, Lawrence. I've out of Joey Lawrence for the year. Uh, soon to appear in... You know, it's like, hey, little Joey Lawrence, everything's going to be better, because eventually you're going to be in 2020's greatest film, Money Plane, where you will play a concierge who can't pronounce the word concierge. Hooray! (laughs) So then, after watching the 1984 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade for the podcast, I said, this has been a whole bunch of really weird fucking fun. I'll watch another one. And I put on the 1995 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, and it, it, the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, featuring uh, the Lawrence Brothers. <laughs> Apparently, all three of them had some sort of sitcom on TV in 1995, because all three of them were in the 1995 Macy's Parade. And it's like, shit, did I somehow will this in the past? <laughs> Do I love money playing that much? Fucking weird. Uh, Natasha thought it was absolutely bizarre to uh, because we have, like, Natasha and I watched Cheers back in the day, yeah. but now we have watched so much of The Good Place that it was just really weird seeing Sam Malone again. <laughs> It's like, fuck, yeah, you were a big thing. Holy and you, shit. You were, you were young. Yeah. Shit, you were young. But then also, but then also, like, I was young when Cheers was on TV, but you also have to remember that when I was in junior high school and high school and college, reruns were still a thing. You know? I grew up with reruns. Yeah. And, and like, those don't exist anymore, and that's so sad. I'm just, like, <laughs> changing the TV and be like, shit, I watch so much. Bewitched, I Dream of Genie, My Three Sons, fucking uh, 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 Gilligan's Island. Mr. Ed. Mr. Ed, fucking... Uh, 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 the- the mother's in law. The Cisco kid was the right Cisco before kid. this 
Sat Saturday morning TV shows started right after, like, Channel 5 would play the Cisco Kid. So I would wake up early, get some cereal, sit in front of the TV, and I'd hear the end credit. I'd watch the end of the Cisco Kid. Yeah. It's like all of these things have disappeared. My kids don't know. Because you like, really couldn't watch all of the Cisco Kid. It was pretty like, bad. Like, a friend of mine was talking about how they hate Sally Field. Oh, I've always hated Sally Field. What a bitch. And, and, and then I'm, like, saying nothing. And they're like, do you like Sally Field? And I'm like, I've always had a crush on Sally Field because I used to watch all the reruns of Gidget. <laughs> it was always on TV when I was, like, eight. I, yeah, would always I don't know see, if I've like, seen Gidget, but I know I've seen Flying Nuns. Changing channel, changing channel, changing channel, cute chicken bikini. Okay, I'll give it a try. I'm 10. And so I always had just this huge fucking crush on, on fucking uh, Sally Field because yeah. of that. And then the Smokey and the Bandits were so fucking huge back then. Um, oh, God, yeah. Funny. Uh, I had one of the toys from the Toys R Us commercial. Yeah. And Which one? seeing that, the watch that also you could remove it and unfold it, and it was a tiny robot. Yeah. I had that, and I loved that fucking watch nice. so much. And I geeked out when I saw my childhood toy on here. Okay, Bunny, on a scale from 9 to 10, how excited were you to see the cast of Riptide twice? I. Twice. I Weird. I, 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 look, at least they have that. You know, when they're going back over their memories, they can, they can go back and they can watch this and be like, we were somebody for a moment. You know? Yeah. They, they were no Simon and Simon. Yeah. But they came right on after Magnum. This was kind of a big deal. They had a robot. They were no airwolf. No. And it was crap. Yeah. And I don't uh, think we've seen any of these people again. Oh, wait. Hold on, Bunny. We need to stop for a commercial. When he was eight years old, young Oscar Meyer had a dream. To one day make shitty ass baloney. So you mean to tell me that the Statue of Liberty I exists now because of the baloney people? Is that what these commercials are telling me? I believe so. It it can, like they showed that commercial like eight times that like Oscar Meyer is restoring the Statue of Liberty. I'm like. When the fuck did that happen? What the fuck is this? <laughs> I don't think historians wrote that down. So that's weird. Uh, and Cliff Clavin sings. Oh, yes. No. Oh, no. Well, okay. to be technical, Cliff Clavin lip syncs. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. So when this his is a... earpiece was working. Oh, the person who has lip synced the worst in the history of the Macy's Parade is they got Don McLean uh, to sing American Pie at the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. And you think, oh, okay, it's like 1981, 1984. Uh, yeah, that should be good. No, it was like five years ago. He was old as fuck, and he had no idea how to lip sync. <laughs> it was bad. Like, the song starts, and he's like... Ah! It, it, it was horrible. He was the worst. Fuck, fucking Don McLean. Uh, fucking Abner the Eccentric. I miss the underdog balloon. I marked out when the Get Along Gang showed up. Yeah. That was one of my favorite cartoons back then. It was just fucking animals, anthropomorphic animals who live in the forest, and they learn important lessons. 
I had one of the animals, like the leader of the gang. He was like a fucking moose or some shit. And I carried that uh, that plushie around everywhere I went when I was a little kid. I love the Get Along gang. Yeah. Uh, the rest of my family hated me because I was so sensitive and cried all the time. I was a very sensitive child. That's probably why my dad started ignoring me because I was so sensitive. And so one day my parents come home from the store and say, Hey, Stevie, uh, we accidentally bought this book and thought, Hey, since we didn't have to buy it, maybe we can give it to Stevie. It's got the characters you like and maybe you'll like it. And the... And, and like, I'm like, okay, I'm seven, and I know that's bullshit. Yeah. But whatever, and the book was The Get Along Gang and the Tale of the Big Cry Baby. Okay. That's, and this was, and this has been my childhood. <coughs> so, uh... So, Bunny, when you heard Robert Vaughn reciting poetry, how hard did your penis get? Uh, pretty hard. Yeah, yeah, I imagine. Pretty hard. Robert Vaughn, man. Yeah. And what was he reciting again? I forget. The poem that, uh, the Statue of Liberty poem. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Huddled Masses. And then I think he started singing. Uh, the Fraggle Rock float was awesome, and I wanted to mention it. It had a big giant gorg that was trying to catch the Fraggles, and I wanted to mention it because Apple recently bought the rights to Fraggle Rock, and yeah. they're doing a new series in 2022, uh, so next year, with actual puppets. It's not a cartoon or CGI or some shit. They're going back to actual puppets, and, and it, it looks really good, and they seem to have gotten the same voice cast, so I was really excited about that. Also, I, I, I always appreciated that the Fraggles basically worshipped the, the compost heap. Yeah, the trash heap. Uh, Marjorie, yeah. the trash heap. I love the yeah. trash heap. Also, even when I was a kid, fuck. Fuck Woody Woodpecker. <laughs> always hated Woody Woodpecker. Yeah, what I never liked Woody Woodpecker. Shit. That laugh can uh, suck my lady balls. Somewhere, somewhere on the planet Earth, there is a man whose sole fetish is Watching Irene Cara sing the flash dance theme while Garfield and Marmaduke gyrate around her. <laughs> and it must be difficult because they can only masturbate to the 1984 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Yeah. Those Oshkosh Bagosh commercials really drove me nuts after like the 12th time. And the crazy part is I'm not joking. Yeah. Uh... I remember V the miniseries, and I remember V the follow-up miniseries. I do not remember V the short-lived weekly shitty television series that they were promoting. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember that at all. Which I guess is why it's short-lived. Oh, very short-lived. I'm not sure if it went 13 episodes, and I'm not dead sure that they didn't actually retrofit the series to make the second mini series out of that might be that might be true yeah uh fun fact bunny the winchester man community did that, man did v burn hot and burn out really quick i had a v action figure and it was a random v soldier but the cool part was was that his Face's skin came off to reveal the alien underneath. Yes. And there was a thing in the back that would make its uh, forked tongue stick out, and I fucking loved that. I carried that around with me. I carried around a lot of toys when I was a kid. Yeah. This is my favorite toy. I'm going to take it to the store. I'm going to take it to church. I'm going to take it fucking everywhere. I love this toy. Yeah. Not that my parents ever took me to church, but I loved V. When I was a kid. And that's weird because I was like in third grade, but we were all playing B. You know, I yeah. remember as a kid 
we would all play like, what do you want to play today? Let's play Running Man. <laughs> Wait a minute. You were in third grade in like 84? Uh, hold on. I was seven years old oh when God. this parade happened. I, I was a mom. Yeah. I was, I was seven years old. Of two. Wow. Yeah. I was I, a mom of two. I was figuring out how to be an adult. With some yeah. fair success here and there. A little bit. I was a mom. A little bit. Yeah. I, I imagine that's... in 81. I, I, just, I just had an epiphany. I just had an apostrophe. Because uh, Eleanor and Maxwell play Squid Game all the time. I imagine that's comparable. Oh, yeah. To uh, us playing V in a Running Man as a kid. Okay, yeah, yeah that makes sense. That makes sense. My uh, kids played Land Before Time. Land Before Time. Yes. Jesus. Um, uh, fun fact, Bunny: the Winchester Community High School Band is comprised solely of musicians whose mothers were burned alive by demons, causing the band members to become demon hunters. Yeah. Oh, really? Thank you for adding that. That really brought the spice, the flavor to it. Uh, oh, how great would it have been if the Winchester Community High School marching band shows up in 1984 and instead of playing uh, uh, Let It Snow, they play Carry On My Wayward Son. Yeah. That would have been fucking hilarious. I hope to never see Scooby-Doo breakdance as long as I live. It, it, it did make me very reminiscent and a little sad about being from New York. <laughs> yeah. You know? So, so while I was watching it, I, I was reminiscing about Broadway plays and things like that, because they were all advertised locally. Yeah. And I never realized eight. that that was like just a New York thing. Yeah. But of course it is. Yeah. You know, this is how I know Mandy Patinkin was in Evita on Broadway, because he was in the commercials. Don't cry for me, motherfuckers. Or the, the truth w is you all are assholes. Or the WWE or whoever the hell they were at the time, we would get them on local access on Channel 6 at live at a Madison Square Garden. Yeah. You know. Fascinating. All of that kind of stuff. So, so like... It just made me feel very nostalgic. And, of course, being a dumb fuck, I never actually went to a Broadway play. <laughs> yeah. I found on YouTube these old public service announcements from the 80s, uh, and they were like, uh, don't smoke and, and stuff, but it was done by the cast of Cats. It was Cats public service announcements. I found yeah. two of them. And, like... I am when I saw them I was shocked that like the musical cats was so popular that they did bizarre uh public service announcement ads and I would have loved for modern day cats to do that. I like, think it was like, at the Waverly Theater, wasn't it? I yeah, think it like was part of the advertisement. Yeah, and I thought like shit, this must have been like a New York public service announcements because yeah. I never saw these. These are fucking ridiculous. But Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat, or uh, <sighs> Happy Birthday Gemini, or... Like, I knew Harvey Firestein before I think the rest of the world <laughs> knew Harvey Firestein. David! Because, because he David. Him, did the Broadway production of La Caja Fol and Torch Song Trilogy. Fuck, yeah. Wow, you probably knew a few more people in this parade than I did. But that was just... But like, but like, that was just being a New Yorker. That wasn't like I was yeah. really into Broadway. Like, I'm more into Broadway now in retrospect. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But it was just 
that's just what was around. <laughs> that was what's, what was part of television advertising. That was what was part of radio advertising. Yeah. I... Was Mary Lou Retton just two feet tall? Yeah, I believe so. I mean, I was a kid at that time, so, like, I just knew she was a bit short, but, like, was she, like, was she, was she a, a little person? Well, she was, she was artificially like, engineered by our, our government go. okay. in response to, to the to previous instill, Olympic yeah, with to Russian patriotism. king Nadia Komenich winning. Yeah, okay. So it was like, we need an all-American gymnast. And they collected sperm from all over and yeah. tested it for gymnasticity. gymnasticity. I love and, gymnasticity. And they created Mary Lou Retton. Yeah, okay, well, that makes sense. And, and, and since they were at it, they made her in the convenient carry size. I said, I said they're going to announce... Uh, Olympians from 1984. I'm going to know Mary Lou Ren and nobody else. And then fucking Greg Louganis slapped me in the face. Yeah. And I was like, shit, dog. Yes. I know you. <laughs> I see you. I saw you throughout the rest of my life more than I saw Mary Lou Ren. I saw Mary Lou Ren throughout the 80s. I saw Greg Louganis throughout the rest of my life. Yeah. Fucking good for you, Greg Louganis. So I love Macy's non sequiturs. I said this uh, earlier in in the podcast, but they just get like a top hat and they put a bunch of shit in it and they just yeah. spin it around and they're like, okay, let's uh, pull out some stuff. Okay, Neil Sedaka sings New York, New York on the uh, Scooby-Doo float sponsored by Mutual of Omaha. There you go. That's 10 minutes of a fucking parade. Yes. And so the best non sequitur of this parade is two actors from Hill Street Blues. Yes. Oh, God. Who can't sing. No. Singing a cop song about bank robbers while the cast of the kids' cartoon Shirt, Shirt Tales sings and dances with him, with them. Yes. What the fuck was that? I, I, I don't know. I was aghast. Yes. Fucking Hill Street Blues singing an old cop song yeah. with the cast of Shirt Tales. I, I never saw an episode of Shirt Tales, but I would watch their opening credits all the time because I loved their opening theme song. But, but I had, I don't... But again, it's so funny to see some... See, like, seeing people out of context is kind of fucking hysterical. Yeah, Where you is. take this tough-looking cop from the show, who I am sure is always just a tough-looking cop on the show, but then you dra drop him in the middle of a parade on Fifth Avenue... And make a dance. ...with dancing animals. Yeah. It looks absurd. It looks beautifully absurd. Yeah, it's all insane. That's what I love about the Macy's Parade. And excuse me? Fuck you, Rich Little. Where's Bimbo? Like, he's still... Like, he's still... Yeah, where's Bimbo? Fuck where's him. fucking but, Bimbo? But you know he's just looking down for a Muppet to shake down for drugs. Who? The guy from Hill Street Blues. Oh, yeah. The guy from... There yeah. was a guy from Hill Street Blues who was there to support the other two guys from Hill Street Blues that were doing the musical number. Yes. And it's like, it, it, like I don't think I ever saw an episode of Hill Street Blues, but I could probably sing the, hum the theme song. <laughs> there were a lot of shows like that back in the day. Yeah. That's something. So, well, so, because theme songs were still getting popular on the radio, weren't they? Yeah, I remember listening to the listening to uh, the Welcome Back Carter theme song on the radio all the time. Yeah, and uh, Greatest American Hero. Those were songs you just heard on the radio. Raindrops keep falling on my head, the classic one. But was that a theme song? Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Fame. That was Fame. another one I heard on the radio all the time. Yeah. I heard fucking Mr. Ed a couple times <laughs> on the radio. Okay, so, Bunny, uh, so Rich Little showed up, and he did all the impressions that he does. Yes. And so I said to myself, I, is he alive? What is he doing? What is happening? The last time I checked, which has been not that long ago, oh. he is alive. Yeah, so I looked him up, okay? Uh, and I learned so many bizarre things. Canadian-born. Uh, so he's a Canadian. In 2010, he got his citizenship. 82 years old, still alive, still does live performances. He's been divorced four times. In the late 60s, the Pink Panther people who were making the Pink Panther cartoons, apparently in the late 60s, they said every Pink Panther cartoon we've done has had no dialogue. Pink Panther doesn't talk. The people fighting Pink Panther don't talk. This is hard, and it fucking sucks. We need to start making people talk, because doing cartooning is hard. Yes. And it's like, oh, Tom and Jerry didn't talk. Yeah, but you know who did talk? The dogs talk. The owners talk. The wildly offensive black mammy maid talked. You look back at those uh, Tom and Jerry cartoons, there's some serious racist shit in there. Their yeah. nanny was a mammy, and it's all fucking horrible. But, like, there was still talking in Tom and Jerry. There were never any talking in, in, in uh, Pink Panther. So they said, hey, we got to fucking start making people talk. So they did two cartoons in the late 60s. Pink Sink, which I'm pretty sure is a very dirty ACDC song. Yeah. And Pink Ice. And they hired Rich Little to do the voice of the Pink Panther. Really? And they're like, okay, first one, uh, Sink Pink. We'll just have him do one line. And then in the second one, Pink Ice, then we'll have him talk through, throughout it. But it'll be a slow, gradual thing. And I'm sure the fans are going to love it. The fans hated it, and he stopped talking. But Rich Little was the voice of the Pink Panther. <laughs> Blew me away. In the 80s, he would that's be... A, well, that's just a great trivia question. I watched the two cartoons. They're on YouTube. It's yeah. fucking weird to hear the Pink Panther talking. It's like those cartoons you would get every once in a while where Wile E. Coyote is talking. And it's like <laughs> Wile E. Coyote is chasing the Roadrunner, and he doesn't say anything. And it's like, fuck, I'm going to try and catch uh, Bugs Bunny. Pleased to make your acquaintance, I am Wiley Coyote, a genius. Yes. And it's like, fucking, why are you talking to him and not to him? Or possibly her. I'm pretty sure the Roadrunner is a chick. But, which is probably why uh, she's so smart. Uh, but uh, here's another fun fact about Rich Little. This blew my mind. In the 80s, Rich Little would secretly be hired to dub the voices of famous actors that could barely talk in movies. Yeah. So, like, hey, we're doing this uh, uh, Pink Panther movie. We have David Niven in it. He's 300 years old. He can barely talk. Fine. We need him to be in the movie, have him be in the film, walk around, say his lines, and then we'll just get Rich Little to do the voice. He did that a shit ton. Of times in movies, like it's the 80s, and hey, we can't let people know that Gene Kelly can barely fucking talk. Get Rich Little on the phone, and he would be hired to be, to pretend to be real voices of famous celebrities. <laughs> that blows my mind. So you're seeing some movie with a famous person, and it's like, oh yeah, this is actually Rich Little doing that famous person. Okay. So here's my favorite rich little story that I learned this week. Um, George W. Bush was a huge rich little fan. Okay. Which shouldn't come as a shock because George W. Bush is a piece of shit. So for his 2007 White House Correspondents' Dinner, he gets rich little to host. It's 2007. It's important to remember that it's 2007. 
and Rich Little shows up to host the White House Correspondents' Dinner, and it's like, I'm proud to be here hosting the White House Correspondents' Dinner. And who else is here? Is that Jack Benny? It's 2007. Oh, oh well, that's oh. how uh, uh, Rich Little would say it, but what if Johnny Carson was here? Bitch, it's 2007. Yeah. And then some person does the speech, and then... Uh, it is sad. Yeah, and then like uh, some uh, person does a speech, and then it's time to uh, go back to Rich Little, and it's like powerful words. It's me, <laughs> Howard Cosell. It's two thousand and seven, Rich Little. So fucking Rich Little was demolished by reviewers and the press and shit because it's like fucking, it's two thousand seven. But don't you want to hear his Eminem okay. impersonation? I don't think he got any new characters after a certain period I, in time. And it's I just kind really, of sad. I really want to hear Rich Little Snoop Dogg. Yeah, like fucking, like, and he's still, like, doing performances at, like, hotels and casinos and shit like that. And it's like, good for you. You have had a very long career. But motherfucker, we don't need to keep hearing your John Wayne. You know? Like fucking, at some point you move on. Let's uh, hear Rich Little doing his Christopher Pattinson. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just want to be clear, Bunny. I want to have it be here uh, recorded that Tim Conway having a hoedown with Cabbage Patch Dolls and the Oshkosh Oshkosh Bagosh commercial will be the only things listed in my suicide note. Okay. Understandable. Love you, Mayo. Love you. I will only allow you to call me Mayo. Everyone else is a bitch. Don't get me wrong. You're also a bitch. Yeah. But everyone else is too. Uh, how is it that McDonald's had 12 different ads for this? Oh, God. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? And it was weird because, like, one of the commercials is McDonald's all-new 20-piece McNugget meal. Perfect for a massive corporate uh, office party or an entire classroom or just Steve. And what I learned that was interesting, in that period and for most of the time, they still had the McDonald's McDonald land characters. McDonald was played by Squire Friedel. Squire Friedel? I thought you were going to say Willard Scott. But who, was, I... who was an actor in the 70s. You know, like sometimes they try pushing an actor and that actor just doesn't go anywhere. That was yeah, Squire the... Friedel. So, like, he had a series or two. I think he was always partnered with somebody else like he was yeah, in a series um, with a guy they could have been detectives they could have been lawyers they could have been a lot of shit it was a show in the 70s okay and then he kind of disappeared and i found out well he became ronald mcdonald i mean he probably got a lot of fucking money for that more than he did being a fucking celebrity i imagine whoever they pick to be ronald gets a decent amount of money yeah Especially if you're doing it for a long time. I was surprised that they still had the McDonald Land character in 1984. There was one commercial that had like a, some weird old guy and then like a pirate. And it's like, I thought you had already been sued by the, by the HR Puffin stuff people at this, time, at this period. I, I am not sure about that. It, it, it's just surprising that like, oh shit, it's another McDonald's commercial. It's a different one. Okay. Oh, shit, it's another McDonald's commercial. Oh, it's a different one. Oh, shit, it's another McDonald's. This is the ninth different McDonald's commercial. Yeah. I'm used to a company having one commercial, and then there you go. You keep seeing that commercial, but, like, fucking McDonald's had, like, 15 on deck. Yeah. Like, what the but hell? But then they get a little forgiveness because they slip in Ronald McDonald's house, and 
and like, ah, uh, you know, you could say a lot of shit about McDonald's. I recently but explained Ronald McDonald House, you know. I recently explained the Ronald McDonald House to the kids, and and we were getting McDonald's, and someone said, "What's the Ronald McDonald House?" And I'm like, oh, "Okay, well, that's actually wonderful. Let me explain what that is." And like the kids had no idea what that was, and it's like, well, there were advertisements for that when I was a kid, yeah. and here's the advertisements. They told you exactly what the Ronald McDonald House was, and it's like fucking like, okay, McDonald's is evil, but. Uh, that's like the best yeah. thing in the world. Fucking like fucking good on you, McDonald's. I mean, I mean, okay. They're probably using it as a tax shelter. Oh, absolutely. But they're still help, helping a fuckload of kids. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it's like, oh, McDonald's. <clears throat> I really want to hate you more than I can. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, so that's all I've got for the uh, 1984 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Our podcast has gotten shorter. It's just there's so much to fucking talk about in this goddamn parade. Yes. And fucking we haven't, we, we've we only glossed over Scooby-Doo breakdancing. Yeah, Scooby-Doo breakdancing, fucking, there was so much. But it so was much. a highlight. Yeah, there was so much here. Oh, I loved the part where there's a squiggly worm, and on top of it is Paddington Bear. But Bryant Gumble has obviously been given copy that calls him Curious George. Yes! Yes! And, it's, and like, he pauses after he says that Bryant it's Curious Gumbel George. Bryant Gumble said Curious George. And who was he pauses. Paddington Bear. Yeah, he pauses when he says Curious George, and he pauses just long enough for you to say... Fucking no, that's Curious George. And then he says, like, although I can plainly see that's Curious George. And so he just stops talking. Yeah. Because it's like, I'm not going to say the rest of this, because that's not fucking Curious George. The only thing that I can think of is that he was wearing a yellow hat. Yeah. Curious George was, and maybe they just got confused that way. But, like, I thought that was hilarious. There was one. Well, no, George never wore the hat. Yeah, but I, but still, like when you think of Curious George, you do think of the yellow hat. Yes. So I thought maybe that's where someone got confused, but yeah, no, that was hilarious. All of that was hilarious. Yes. Yeah. Oh, but I gotta stop myself. Well, it's but I hard think, to think when he got to piss, you know? Yeah. But I think, that, yeah, <laughs> he needed to piss a lot. He did say at one point in time that he's had a lot of coffee, and it's like, oh, well, that's your downfall. Yeah. Right there. That's why suddenly uh, the Brady Bunch mom is hosting the goddamn parade. But, yeah, you, you hey, do not know? drink a lot of coffee before the Thanksgiving Day parade when you're the This is why host. now there's like four or five people hosting, yeah. and not just Pat Sajak and fucking Bryant Gumbel. Yeah. That's why there's more than one person. There's a team now that hosts. It's always two people, not just... One person needing to take a fucking piss. It needs oh. to be an action team. The Macy's Thanksgiving I'm thinking Day Parade. Five or six people. Yeah. Yeah, they rotate, they tag out like a tag team match. And and they and they they are roaming around the parade site looking for the best bits. Yeah. You know? Yeah, like uh, uh Fred Willard used to to do that. He would just be walking around with the fucking clowns and the people holding the balloons and shit, and he would just interview. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if they do that anymore. Is Fred Willard still alive? I don't even know. So it's like, breaking in, breaking in, I gotta break in, I gotta break in. Uh, the Berenstain Bears are devouring Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> they are devouring Winnie the Pooh. Get a swing a camera over here. <laughs> I just realized it, Bunny. Uh, the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade is my Super Bowl. Yeah. It's just one time a year when, like, okay, this is kind of my weird sport and I'm going to mark out. <laughs> this is my Super Bowl. The Super Bowl's coming up this week. The Macy's Thanksgiving Day Super Bowl. And I'm super excited because it, it's always a fucking shit show and I love it. Uh, so that's all I've got this week. For this week's movie, the 1984 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Um, 
There was there is one more episode in November before we get to December. And when we get to December, we got to start watching the Christmas movies. Okay. So the way I feel, we have one last episode to do something non-Christmassy and I've got an episode. I've got a movie. I okay. haven't put it yet uh, on our shared cough cough. I've been having a hard time uploading on our shared cough cough, so I've been uploading it on another cough cough that I have, like an really? old, and then sending you a link. Sometimes that's what I did with uh, Last Night in Soho, which is a wonderful movie. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I haven't done it yet, but I'll do it once we are done here. It is a movie that came out this year in 2021. It's one of my favorite movies of the year. It's maybe like in the top three. It was, you can absolutely, positively, 100% tell that it was filmed in quarantine, but they came up with a plot that made sense. It's a uh, end-of-the-world movie that I absolutely love, and it's called How It Ends. Okay. It's got an incredible cast. It's a dumb movie that I am in love with. Okay. It is an end of the world movie that is adorable, and I love it, and it's incredible, and fucking it's it's simple, and I fucking love it so much. And it had such a limited release; nobody knows what the fuck this movie is. But we're gonna do it because I love it, and uh, it's next week, the 2021 film, How It Ends. And uh, also, uh, I'm going to be watching some th- cinema therapy and talking about that. And uh, maybe we'll be talking some more sports, because football's happening right now, and there's a lot of games, you know? Steelers-Chargers happened today, and I'm having a hard time with that, because, like, the, the Charger charges the steel. Does that mean that the Charger is electrocuted, or the Charger has power? But the oh. power... The power that the steel has won't affect the charger. I don't know. It's kind of a toss-up. But I love talking about the force, of course, because I'm such a force. <laughs> uh, but that's next week. Now that I'm looking back at this week, the highs, the lows, the ups, the downs, the ins, the outs, Placido Domingo, Ghostbusters Afterlife, uh, Vikings versus Cowboys. I got to say, oh, uh, uh, Jon Snow, bad name. For a physician in 1850, I gotta say, I think that this has been a pretty good episode of the podcast. This has been a damn good episode. Okay, good. I felt the same way, but I didn't want to say anything because I feel like you're the person who makes that distinction and not me, and I didn't want to intrude, impose, (laughs) impound, imprint, uh, some other im word. But yes, I concur... I concur with your <laughs> assessment. Good sir. Oh, they don't have their headphones on. I shouldn't have been yelling. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve slash Mr. Steve slash Malin. Bunny, I wanted to thank you. I uh, discovered a new name this week. Malin, it, I love it so much. I want it to be my name now. And I came up with it while in the bath, trying to think of what you said, that, like, I just need, a, I just need shower time, and I just came up with yeah. it. May because I'm the May Queen, Lynn because I was trying to shorten Galindo. And also, when you hear someone named May Lynn, you kind of think they're Asian, and I look uh, uh, racially ambiguous, and so the name alone will confuse people. <laughs> I love the name so much, and I, uh, I I have you to thank for that. So thank you. For you that. are welcome. Uh, and I am Reverend Stephen on behalf of Natasha, Maxwell, Eleanor, Mal, Emerald, and ev- uh, everyone else. I just want to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And you wormus. And you what? Wormaths. Is that some video game thing I don't get? Okay. And you other mother. Thank you for that. Eleanor is a big fan of other mother. Do 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 do
cut and print.